Jason Wahika, and today we're going to go over creating a uh, basic walking character with no weapon, no HUD, and uh, we're also going to create a wake-up sequence, so um, a, a small camera cinematic that ends up with the player controlling it. <coughs> so, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to hit play here. Uh, this is the basic first-person template. Uh, I just have a, a new level here that, uh, that I've spawned. Uh, so you won't have this, but you will have the gun and the crosshair. And if you press mouse one, it will spawn a projectile. So we don't want any of that, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it. I'll just do this really quick. I'm going to click on my uh, first person character down here in my first person blueprints, blueprint. Double click on that. It opens up this view. And what we'll do is we'll select the arms and we'll hide them because we don't want the arms. We'll also select the gun. And we'll go down to, you want to scroll down to rendering and hide those as well. So let's do a compile quick, hit play, looking good. Still fire my projectile and my HUD is still there. So let's go ahead and disable the projectile for now. We're just trying to be as quick and dirty as possible. I'm going to go ahead and disable that. I've selected this box as red so you guys can see which one uh, it's currently in. So disable that, do a quick test. Yep, pressing F1 does not spawn a projectile anymore. That's good. We're going to go over to the first person HUD. Open that up. So the only box in here is this one. So if you just disable enter uh, the HUD here, it won't activate and you'll never get that um, crosshair. So that also solves the problem. It's just quick and dirty. We're just trying to be as fast as possible here. All right, so now I've got a walking character. Uh, this is all good. Uh, something just secondary uh kind of note here. Um, I've already messed with my player's camera based on uh, where it is inside the capsule. Uh, the default um, the default template kind of has it back here and I'll show you what, what the difference is between the two real quick. So in this one if I stand on this preview right I know that I'm directly over it and when I rotate you can see that I'm not directly over it anymore. Uh, when I'm rotating. It looks like I'm sidestepping a bit. Kind of hard to, to tell here. I do believe the default is a little further back. Um, and you can kind of see, like, if I do this, see if this is over it directly. Yeah, there's definitely some sort of, like, side movement. Like, I'm not spinning directly in a, in a spiral. Uh, so one of the things that I, I was doing here is just, like, moving the camera here forward. Uh, you don't have to do that. It's all up to personal taste right now. I'm just doing this. Um, and let's see. What's the next thing we want to do? So now that we've got our camera set up, we're just going to go ahead and save. Uh, the next thing we want to do is create a wake-up scene, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the player wake up in this closet and then face the doorway here, uh, and then they'll be able to leave. So let's go ahead and do that. Drag this over to 50. Place him in the doorway. Rotate him 90 degrees. I'll probably just move him back a little bit. You can see the camera right here. I want the door to be kind of framed in here. So you can see that you're inside the room. Let's do a quick play. Yeah, this view looks good. So let's start getting our sequence or stuff together. So I'm just going to right click at my first person blueprints uh, directory animation, go down to level sequence, I'm going to type in wake or sequence uh, player wake up. Do a quick save, double click on it, it opens it up down here at the bottom. Um, the next thing you also want to do is just drag it into the world so our level uh, scripts can reference it. Uh, so I'm just going to put this in the closet because I know that this is where the sequence is going to take place. Um, versus just placing it somewhere arbitrary in the level. Uh, it's nice to have them localized to the areas that they're going to start from or be a part of. So now that we have that, I'm going to go to my uh, my place uh, tab. I'm going to have it set to all classes, and I'm going to search for camera. And that shows me a bunch of different types. There's a cinematic camera actor. We're not going to be dealing with that one today. Even though we're making a cinematic, we don't want it to look like a cinematic. We want it to look like 
uh, the player is waking up. And this camera right here has kind of those settings already done. So I'm just going to drop this in. As you can see, it's purple. If you drag in the cinematic one, it's black. So you can tell the difference there. Going to rotate this. Going to have it pointing. I guess I could just have it pointing straight up for now. <coughs> Lower the sensitivity on that. Maybe just a little bit. It's my rotate. Bring that down to five. Yeah, something like this would be fine. All right. So now we've got our camera in its starting position. I'm going to go ahead and drop it into. Um, actually, I'm going to create. I'm going to add it to the sequencer. So we go add uh, actor to sequencer. And because we have it selected, it's going to be here at the top. If not, you can always just search for camera and then it shows up here. Cool, so now we have that. I'm also going to create a camera cut track and this is going to allow us to activate the camera and deactivate the camera when the uh, sequencer is playing. So if we don't have this track, the camera will never be on unless you've scripted it through uh, other means in Blueprint. But for this purpose, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to add it to the track now so it starts uh, from there. So let's go ahead and click on camera, add camera actor, and as you can see it's populated the view with uh, the camera actor uh, that we have, which is nice. Alright, so now that that's done, uh, let's get some basic animation in. Or actually, um, yeah, before we start animating, I just want to script this into the level, just so you guys can see it working, because if we press play right now, um, nothing happens. The sequence isn't playing, uh, you're not you're not starting from the floor, so we want to definitely just test that out real quick and make sure that's working. So I'm going to select this uh, sequencer that we placed in our level, and we're going to go over to this blueprint tab, open level blueprint. So this is where you do all your level scripting, uh, triggers, anything like that that's in this inside the level that doesn't need to be in a blueprint or a prefab. Uh, you'll do it here. So now that we have that selected, we'll be able to reference that actor because it's in the uh, persistent map. We, we don't have any different levels here, so everything will be able to be referenced in the persistent. Uh, sometimes if you have different layers and this object is in a different layer, it might not work like that. You'll have to use that layer's um, blueprint uh, script, but, but since we're always doing this just in one level, um, we're just going to be able to reference that directly into the PMAP. So I'm going to click down, uh, right click. So this is our um, sequencer. I'm going to drag out from here. I'm going to type in play and play sequencer. So now we have a reference to it and we can start playing it whenever we want to. Uh, because we're doing a wake up animation, we're going to do it on startup. So I'm going to say begin event begin play. And we're just going to drag that out and connect that up. So now we're set up. The sequence should play from the beginning and because we've added the camera and the camera cut here, uh, it will play uh, from that view for 150 frames. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And as you can see, uh, I'm pointing towards the ceiling here. The camera has been activated, and then after 150 frames, it pops me back in here. So one thing to note, uh, and we'll get to later, which is during this, it doesn't lock the player in place or anything like that. So um, as you can see, now that it's done, I've walked away. We'll fix that too. But before we get to that, we're going to go ahead and animate this uh, so that the camera wakes up real quick and then stands up to where the player is. So I'm going to go down to my camera actor. I'm going to open up its tabs here. Uh, we're going to be working with the transform tab. So you can see location, rotation, and scale. Um, for now, we can just key in using the transform um, wavelengths but, uh, or the keyframes. But if you want to do just only the location or only the rotation um, sometimes people just want to do the location and then some other form or factor can uh, change the rotation uh, and y if you don't have any keys on the rotation you'll be able to uh, change the rotation in other means maybe through blueprints in a different way uh, so that's something to keep in mind uh, but for now we're going to be doing it through uh, we're just going to use the transform key so go ahead and click a first key and I'm going to show you some common uh, potential mistakes that can take place. So now I've keyed. This is my starting position. And now I'm going to go ahead and move my guy and rotate it. 
right? And then I'm going to move it over to where I want to uh, add another keyframe. But as you can see, uh, as soon as I moved it, it snapped back to the original key. And that's because we haven't added any in other information yet. So there are a few ways around this, but uh, one would be positioning it on the keyframes that we already want to um, add a new key and then moving it. And then before we do anything else, we key again, and that should work. Yep, that seems to work. Or, uh, before that, you know that you're going to do something here. You can just key that in, rotate it, and then you would key it again. Because if you didn't key it again, it's still going to snap back to those. Uh, so, it's always nice to have um, a key there to remind yourself about that. So, we're going to go ahead and snap the player back to... I believe is that 90 so rotation we'll just set that to 90 0 and I'm gonna rotate this back to here so 180 and I'm gonna hit the transform key again it's gonna make all those marks and we should be fine let's double check yep so you can see it's moving up and waking up uh, and now I'm gonna move it forward to kinda match it up as you can kinda see that it doesn't quite match up we might have to like eyeball it a bit, but there's a better way of doing that. And I will show you that right now. So, if you select the player blueprint um, and you double click on the camera, um, you can see that we're able to kind of move it around a little bit here. Um, you can see its location, but this is its location relative to the, the blueprint. And you want to see it uh, relative to the world. So we're just going to switch that to world, and you can see these numbers change. Uh, this is its actual position in the world, uh, and that's where we want the camera to end up at. So I'm going to take these uh, values and plug them in, open the location. You can see it's one uh, negative 350, so we'll do that to, uh, to 348. I'm going to keyframe again, and now we need the Y. So I'm going to double click on this guy again, grab the Y. Click back on my actor, go down here to the Y, input that, and you can see that it's already snapped to basically right over it. I'm going to keyframe again, uh, our keyframe being on the location that we're going to end on. Then I need the Z. Uh, our Z is off. It's like 195 right now, so I'm going to double click on the camera actor in our player blueprint, copy, paste that in there, hit enter, and then I'm going to keyframe again. So now our waking up animation will now land on where the player is going to be. So because we're only doing 50 frames, I'm just going to go ahead and shrink this down. And I'm also going to shrink down the end bit here. So that's good. I'll go ahead and save. Let's just do a quick test. So yeah, that seems to be working. Uh, but as you can see, there's a weird snap going on and that is because the camera has some settings on it that we need to remove. Uh, so I believe if we remove the constraints right here, this uh, constrain the aspect ratio, that will fix it. It says something about black bars being added and blah, blah, blah. You just unclick that. And that should uh, fix those weird snapping transition issues. Let's see. Let's hope it works. Yep, seems to be working just fine. And then I'm back to where I am. Actually, right now, um, this is a good lesson. I'm not able to move, and that's because um, I forgot to set this back to... Uh, I'm going to double-click on the camera. It's in absolute location. I'm going to set that back to relative rotation. Uh, or relative location. And if I save and play again, now I'm able to move. Now, we talked about the player being able to move, so I'm just going to hold W right now during the cutscene. And you can see that now I'm, I've moved all the way over here. So there's a few ways to do that. So one of the fastest ways to do this is just to click on your sequencer. Uh, if you look over to the right-hand side, there's a playback uh, tab. And inside this playback tab, they have a lot of really nice options. Uh, two of those options are disable movement. Check that. Disable look. So doing those two things will prevent us from looking around or moving while the sequence is playing. And when the sequence is done, it will enable us to move and look around again. Um, you can also hide the player and hide the HUD during this. So if you have a bunch of HUD and you don't want it to play. But uh, we're fine the way it is now. 
because we just want it to look like the player is waking up. So I'm going to go ahead and save all of that. And we'll do a quick play test. So I'm moving around, I'm moving around, nothing's happening. Yep. Was able to wake up. Let's do another. So cool. So uh, that's basically it. Uh, that's a very quick and fast version of the uh, setting up a basic character that can move around the space with no gun and using the first person template and then having a wake up animation uh, that plays. You can add a bunch of keyframes and do a bunch of really interesting things with the wake up camera later on. Uh, but that's just the, the basics of how I would set it up at this point in time. So cool. Uh, thanks for stopping by. We'll have some more tutorials in the future about more uh, scripting with narrative. So thank you.